Did Roman apartment houses, ancient Roman apartment houses, have a super on site? Or a doorman posted at the front to open the doors and hail a cab for you? Was parking included for your horse and cart? What happened when your apartment building went condo? These and other questions will be answered right after this. I'm Professor Drell Markenberg, and I've been teaching a wide variety of history courses at colleges across this country for the past 30 years. In this video, I'm going to tell you about Roman apartment houses, or insulae, who lived in one of these insulae, and on what floors, the floor plan of a typical insula, and largely what they look like, at least from the outside. At the end, I'll have the wrap-up quote on this video. But first, make sure to click like, share, especially subscribe, and that little bell thingy. So I continue to bring you more great videos just like this one. In Rome and Roman towns and cities, most people lived in an apartment building or insula, or plural would be insulae, which literally means a Latin island. So the insula was so called because all the people living together in a single building resembled, or so the Romans thought, people living in an island, all clumped together cheek by jowl, rather than in their own houses. By the fourth century AD in Rome itself, there were 45,000 insulae but only 2,000 private houses, or domi. And you see it here. This is, at least in Ostia, what the Insula de Pinti would have looked like from the outside. Looks kind of like a modern Italian apartment building. And you see it here. These are the various floor plans of the area. These insulae, mostly made of brick with timber, were prone to both fire and collapse. Some of them could be five or six stories tall, and if not properly built with a big enough base at the, at the foundation, the weight of the upper floors could, would often far too easily collapse the whole thing. And this happened far too frequently being the leading cause of urban fires and what you might call urban renewal. In these insulae, and indeed in nearly all Roman houses, there were neither screens nor glass. Neither existed yet. Well, glass does, but not enough to make it into, uh, it was too expensive to make it into a window, much less anything like a wire screen. Uh, so nothing in the windows, perhaps wooden shutters, but more likely for an insula, the tenants simply had to make do with curtains or drapes. Remember, there's also no Venetian blinds yet. Uh, another part here, the insula Diana and the floor plan. This is the way to Ostia, what it would have looked like. And here is the various floor plan of the different rooms part of it. Many insula or insula, I should say, did not occupy an entire block, but shared such with other insula, even domi, the single family structures, as seen from these floor plans of blocks in Pompeii and Ostia. Generally speaking, both rich and poor lived in these insula, with on the ground floor, shops or tabernae. This would be the shop here, the other shops here, another one here, one here as well. Seems to be a rug merchant. 
Uh, Taberna or Tabernai is the plural Taberna, the singular. Yes, Taberna sounds like tavern, like Taverna. And too often this is misunderstood as such in the literature, the history and other historical fiction accounts. But the word simply means shop. Some of them may also provide in food and drink. So there is no one particular word in the ancient Roman sources where you'd say like this, taberna, meaning a tavern to get food and drink. It was simply just a shop. Now, in a reversal of modern patterns, middle class or upper class wealthier tenants did not live on the top floors, but on the lower floors. Not usually the first floor or the ground floor, that's for the shops, but what we in America would call the second floor in Britain, you're gonna call them the first floor. Maybe this one, second, next floor up there. While the poor were consigned to the topmost floors. Why? Well, there are no elevators as yet. So that is the main problem. Also, apartments on the bottom floors actually mostly had running water and toilets connected to the sewer system of the aqueducts, but top floors did not. And so with this and the extra flights of stairs, the poor were relegated to the top, having to schlep up and down stairs in dark, very dark stairwells and hallways. Remember, there's no electric or gas lighting. And normally you're not gonna have torches or lanterns or candles inside the common hallways or stairwells for danger of fire. And remember, it's already a fire as it as it is, the whole building. Now, this is especially difficult at night because some of the poor, if they needed to use the facilities, so to speak, some of them actually were too poor to have a pot to piss in, as the saying goes. So you'll have to stumble down the very dark stairwells to the bottom floor to get yourself to a public toilet and then have to schlep yourself all the way up six flights of stairs or more again. For those with disabilities who were unable to climb stairs were too heavy, whatever. The wealthy, at least, had slaves to help or carry them up and down. But the poor only had family, neighbors, or sometimes only themselves. Due to the lack of chimneys and fireplaces, because they hadn't been invented yet, cooking fires were a danger. So most of those who lived in an insulae, whether poor, wealthy, or middling, ate out, either at one of those tabernae that serve food and drink, which you can see here, uh, models set up from uh, what we had know about Pompeii, Herculaneum, and Ostia, or grabbed fast food from a street vendor. There were no restaurants as we know them today, not even pizza parlors, and I don't know how they even would have survived that, right? And also just think, no coffee shops. Oh my God. The wrap-up quote. This collection of animals of every kind mixed together distressed both the citizens by the unusual stench and the peasants crowded together into their close apartments with heat, want of sleep, and their attendance on each other, and contact itself propagated the disease in these insulae. Tacitus. Let me know what you think of this quote in the comment section below. Also, what you liked about this video and what other historical topics or subjects you'd like to see in future videos. 
be sure to click like, share, especially subscribe, as it will help me bring you more great videos, especially click on that little bell thingy, so you'll know when the next History Waits for No One video is posted. If you want to know more, there are recommended studies on this topic in the description below, along with other ways to connect with me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the past.